Now let us see example that combines two things at the same time. That is dropped object and thrown object. Then let us see this question. What if now your question considers all about thrown and dropped objects? How does it happen? Example here, a stone is thrown vertically upward with an initial velocity of 29.4 meter per second. When you want to write data, then we have initial velocity of 29.4 meter per second. This is initial velocity. And before an object was thrown, with an initial velocity of this one. And it was thrown from the top of the tower. Means that uh, this is a tower. So it was thrown from these points. Not from the grounds. This is the grounds. So an object was thrown from this point. So it was thrown from the point of 34.3 meter. From the distance, Jamal Yerusha alikuwa mesimama kwenye mnala. Ambao na ulefu wa meter 39.3. Kwa hakurusha mesimama chini kama nilivo simama mini. Amesimama kwenye mnala. Ambao unaulefu wa mita 39.3. It was thrown from the top of the tower at 4.3 meter high. Then the question is, find the time that was taken to reach the maximum height. So the time that was taken to reach at the maximum height, it the time that was considered from here to this point. So let's say this is the maximum point that an object was written and in which the final velocity is equal to zero. And its initial velocity is 29.4 meter per second. So we are looking for the time that was taken to reach at the maximum height. So we have initial velocity but we don't have the maximum height. And also we don't have the height from the ground to where the body reached. So that is the point you have to note. So by considering the thrown objects, we can calculate what we call it, the time taken to reach at the maximum height. Remember from the first equation, V is equal to U plus A T. For the thrown objects, final velocity is zero. And initial velocity is given. And then minus gt. Why is it so? Because we are considering about the thrown objects. Means that acceleration will be equal to negative g. And final velocity will be equal to zero. And then head s will be equal to h. Therefore, this is u is equal now to gt. It is possible to use this one to find the time. Simply because we are having initial velocity that is the 29.4, which is equal now to g, that is the 10 times time. We divide by 10, we divide by 10 both times. Therefore, the time that will be taken is equal now to 2.94 seconds. This is time. So it is the time that was taken to read the maximum height from the point of throwing an object. It is the time only taken to reach the maximum point from the point of throwing, not from the ground, because the thrower threw the object from the point of the from the top of the tower, which is at 4.3 meter. That is very important to understand. Don't even try to confuse. Then the question is to the, the, the second question that was A. Now B is to calculate the total time elapses before it reaches the grounds. 
means the time that taken from this one that is T1, the time taken from the top of the tower to reach the maximum point. And then the time taken for the object to, from the maximum point to the grounds. So to find out the time that was taken from this point to the grounds, what we have to do is to find the maximum height. So as we may consider an object that was dropped from this point to the grounds. Then the second point that we have to consider is the height, the maximum height that was gone. We won't find the maximum height that was reached bef before. That was reached if now you don't consider the thrown object. And therefore, the second equation, that is S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. Then becomes H is equal now to UT minus a half GT squared. And the other one, the second, the third equation, V squared is equal to U squared plus 2GH. Therefore, minus 2GH. Now, remember, this is zero. It is now, you have U squared is equal now to 2GH. We can use this one to find the heights. Because what we have, the initial velocity is there. That was given. The initial velocity was given. Now, initial velocity is 29.4. Then squared is equal now to 2 times 10. Then times heights. This is the maximum height that was reached. We have considered about the thrown object to find out the maximum height that was reached if now the object was given with this velocity. So this is the velocity that we are considering about it. That it is the velocity that was given to the body so as it may reach at the maximum point. In the absence of this velocity, it cannot reach. And it, it took... It took 2.94 seconds to reach that point, maximum point. It took that 2.94 seconds to reach that maximum height. And then we are looking for the maximum height that was reached. It is therefore now we come to consider here we divided by 20, here we divided by 20. So in other words, the maximum height that was reached was reached easy to 29.4, this is squared over 20. Now, mathematical, let us calculate. So, the maximum height, that is this one, is equal to 864.360 divided by 20. So, the maximum height, that was read, it is 43.2 meter. This is the maximum height. So, means what? The body was thrown from the top of the tower to the 43.2 meter from the top of the tower and not from the ground. Remember when you refer back to the question, a stone is thrown vertically upward with an initial velocity of 29.4 meter per second from the top of the tower. From the top of the tower, that is 34.3 meter high. Means the height of the tower is 34.3 meter. And an object was thrown from its top to the maximum point. So, from then, the height from here up to this one, it is 43.2 meters. It is the maximum height. But if now for the second question, we have, taken, we have, we have got the time that was taken to read the maximum height. Means the time that was taken to reach at the maximum height, we have said it is 2.94. This is time to reach the maximum height. And the time that we are looking for, the total time that elapses before it reaches the clouds, means the time that was taken for an object to remain in the air before it reaches the clouds. That is the time that we are considering. And this time should be considered in such a way that uh, it is the time that was reached the to the maximum height. And also it is the time that was taken from the maximum height to the grounds. And then the time to find out the time that was taken from the maximum height to the ground. Now we have to consider about the dropped object. Drop the object. That is the downward motion. 
that is downward motion. By considering about downward motion, we have to consider things like that. Uh, initial velocity is zero, final velocity will be there, and also remember H is equal now to, I mean S is equal to H, but also A is equal to G. These are the points that we have to consider. So we have to find the time that was Z used by the body to drop it from the maximum point to the ground by considering about dropped object. For the first equation, V is equal to U plus AT. It is possible to say V is equal now to GT. So then what is this one? We don't have this one. Therefore, we have to use this one to find out what we call it time. It is not possible to use this one. Why is it so? Because we don't have time and we don't have final velocity. So that is not possible. Now for the second equation, that is S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. But remember U is zero. Therefore, H is equal now to 1 over 2GT squared. This is possible to use it. And then it is possible, is it so? Why is it so? Because the height is given. And the height that we should be considering about here is not the height from here to here. And it is not this 43.2. It is the height from the maximum point to the ground means that uh, the height that we should consider, that is this height plus this height, means it is 43.2 plus. It is now 34.3. That is, now we get it is now, it is 5, then point, plus this is, this is 7, then this is 7. 77.5 meter. Why is it so? Because for the dropped object from this point, it is a distance from the maximum height to the ground. We are not considering about the distance from the maximum point to the top of the tower. It is the distance from the maximum height to the ground. And it is not according to me. It is according to the question. The total time that elapses before it reaches the grounds. This was not a ground. The top of the tower, it was not a ground. The ground was here. So we are considering about the height of the tower and the maximum height that was reached after you have thrown an object. So, we use this question, we use this equation to find what is missing. But by considering the height, which is 77.5. So, by doing so, we have 77.5. That is the height is equal now to a half times g, that is 10 times t squared. Therefore, this is the 5. Therefore, we'll be having 77.5 divided by 5 is equal now to t squared. Now, 77 divided by 5. So, is equal now to 15.5, which is approximated as what? It is 16. It is 15.5, which is approximated as 16. Now, t squared is equal now to 16. Square root, square root. Means the time that was taken is equal now to 4 seconds. So this time is not the answer for the second question. It is only an answer for the time that was taken from the maximum height to the ground. So to find the time, the total time that was elapses. So you have to understand you have the first time that is approximated at three seconds. Means the time that was taken to reach the maximum height, plus the time that was taken to reach the ground from the maximum height. So the time that elapses, total time, will be equal to time one plus time two. Means time one is the time taken for an object to reach the maximum height. And the second time is the time that was taken to reach the ground from the maximum height. That is dropped object from the maximum height to the ground. And we have got it is four. So we have three, seconds plus now four seconds then in total we have time taken is equal now to seven seconds so seven seconds is all about this are a second that are used for the an object to remain in the air before it touches the grounds and that is the question so the total time that elapses before it reaches the grounds and that is what we are considering about 
So it is the term that an object remains in air before it touches the ground. So we have, cons we have to consider about the time that was taken from the top of the tower to the maximum height. And the time that was taken from the maximum height to the ground, that is dropped objects. So we have two things to consider here. We have considered about the thrown object and the dropped object together. So as we may find what we are looking for. So what is interesting? If now you are done, you are just dealing with the question that is a matter of understanding that we are considering about two things. You have to be careful. And this should be, seems to be short enough. We have only two data and when you look at it, but it is a very complicated question. And you need to be very careful when you are solving about these questions. So that is all about how you can understand how you can solve what we call it motion under gravity.